Hey guys, welcome to the next physics lesson. And today we're going to be talking about um kinematic graphs. Kinematic kinematics graphs. And this is probably going to be spanning over about a couple or so episodes, um lessons I should say. Um because there's quite a lot to cover. Okay. So the very first graph, the very basic of all kinematic graphs, um, comes from the position. It's called the position versus time graph, and this is the basic one and or the first graph that you probably learn. And what this is is basically let me just for the axes. And a position time graph is a graph with position on the y-axis. So remember, position the, the symbol for for position is a d with a vector hat and time which is t and we're going to say it in seconds and this is in meters okay so what does it mean when we have a point let's say um 3 and 5 that means um 3 here and about 5 here so what does it mean and this is all approximate um like i'm just drawing it by hand freehand so what does it mean when we have a point at 3 5 and remember, this is just zero. So, what does it mean? Well, it basically means that at t equals three seconds, because on the x-axis t equals three seconds. At three seconds, the object's um, position relative to the origin is five meters. And note that um, there is only a positive and negative direction. Like, um, so this means that the graph assumes that. The object is only traveling um, in a linear direction, so on a straight line, so positive to negative. There is no; it's traveling only in a, in I guess this would be called a one-dimensional world. It can only travel on a on a line. It can't travel um, back and forth like that, like here and there. It can't. It can't do that. It can only travel back and forth in this line. So, um, depend depending on on which. Um, side you assign positive to and which side you assign negative to um, this object will be um, wherever so for example um, plus 5 that means that the object is at um, 5 meters in the positive direction wherever you assign positive to um, relative to the origin and remember back in the few um, last few episodes I said that before setting up a problem you should always assign um, a, dire a direction to be positive like for example north as positive which I normally used as the example okay so this is basically what the point means when we have a point the x the uh, what happened there the x coordinate is the time at which the, the, the point occurs the time that we're looking at and the x coordinate I mean the y coordinate co coordinate is the position of the object at that time at time goes three seconds okay so what if we have um, two points? So let's say we have a point here, and let's say this point is uh, one and three. Let's say, and we so that means this point is at t equals one second. So the object, whatever it is, could be a car, could be a bird, could be a could be super, Superman. Um, at t equals one second, um, his position relative to the origin is three meters in the positive direction. Okay, but what happens now if we draw a line? Oops, that's a bad line. If we draw a line, what happens? What is the slope? Well, we know that the formula for slope is change, y, change in y over change in x, right? Rise over run. But in this case, um, it's not x and y anymore, it's d and t. So let's replace y by d, so y by d, and x by t. Let's change x to t. So what? Notice that this formula looks really, really similar. Well, that's because it is basically the formula for speed. For I mean, for velocity. Excuse me. Speed is totally different. For velocity. So we can conclude that the let me write it down. That the slope of a position time graph is just the velocity of the object in the time period. So the slope of um, a position. I'm just write. I'm just gonna use these symbols for that. Position, position versus time graph. 
time graph is just the velocity of that object at that period of time. So let's take these two points as an example. So let's say this is point two and this is point one. So let's say, um, let's write it down here. So point one, point one equals, what is it? One and three. And we have point two, which is three and five. Okay, let's find the velocity between, uh, so if the question asks you, find velocity between t equals one second and t equals three seconds, which is basically what the question is asking you is that find a velocity between t equals one second and t equals three seconds. So find the, veloc the velocity within this range. Um, what, what would you do? Well, what we said over here, the um, velocity is just the slope of the, um, the um, position versus time graph. So what is the formula for slope again? slope or v, we can write it as v now since we know that v is slope, equals rise over run. Remember, rise over run, which is just y2, oops, and that's equal sign. This, and, and do you remember the, the, the equation for slope? It's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's plug it in. What's y2? y2 is 5 minus y1 is 3. And I'm, I assume that you guys know how to do this already because this is great night math. Minus one equals five minus three is two, three minus one is two, and we get one meters per second. And this is the velocity um for the for the time period between one second and three seconds. Okay. And we see actually how the velocity fits into this because the unit for velocity is meters over seconds, right? And what is the slope of a position time graph. Remember the slope of a position of a position of a position time graph is d over t and the units for d and t is meters and seconds. So when you say the slope is d over t and the and the units is actually meters over seconds, what is it equal to? And then we say that, that the slope is just V and the units for V is meters per second, which 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 is exactly equal to what we say of, of what we found out here. So we can see the, the, the relationship between these and we can see how the slope is velocity. Okay, so this is just a basic position for the time graph. Now let's move on to a velocity time graph. Okay. So just like the position time graph, the only difference is that now on the y-axis, velocity is, is represented there. And time is still on the x-axis. And let's say this is in seconds and this is in meters per second. Okay, so what does it mean when we have a point again at three, five? That means that time equals three, the velocity of the object is five meters per second. Positive, so it is going towards the positive direction. Simple enough. Well, again, I'm going to use the same concept as before. What if we have another point right here, 1 and 3, and we drew a line? What will the slope be now? What is the slope of a velocity time graph? If you guys don't know yet, well, let's figure it out um, algebraically. So what is slope again? Slope is change in y over change in x. And what is change in y now? Change in y is just change in v over change in x and x is still t so it's changing t and now from this we can immediately see what the slope is the slope is just acceleration because acceleration equals the change in v over the change in t right so we can say that acceleration equals the slope remember m is slope slope of a velocity versus time time graph okay so we can see that from before the slope of a position of a position time graph is velocity and the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration and we can see how that flows again from displacement to velocity and from velocity to acceleration we can see how all the all this ties in again through graphs okay 
so that so we can say that the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. But what? How do we? Okay, so we know that velocity we can derive acceleration from the velocity time graph using the slope. But can we go backwards? Can we go from velocity? Can we derive displacement from this velocity time graph? And the answer is yes. Yes, we can. And let's think about this for a second. What is the formula for for um, velocity and using displacement? V velocity equals change in d over change in t, right? Okay, but now since what if we are trying to find change in d? Well, let's bring this over to this side. Change in d now equals v times change in t. And let's look at this graph for a second. If we had two points right here, and the formula for displacement is v times t. Well, what is v times t? v times t. It is like finding the area of a box, right? v times t. So we can say that the area under a velocity time graph is actually displacement and I'm not going to go into all the math into this because it involves calculus and I'm and we're probably not there yet I'm I'm quite sure that some of you guys haven't taken cal calculus yet so um, I, I won't go into much, too much detail about um, how it actually is the displacement just um, suffice it to say that the area under a velocity time graph is displacement and what I what do I mean by area when I when I say the area under a velocity time graph, let me just do it here. Let's say we're given a graph like so. It's, again, it's a velocity time graph. So what if we're given like a graph like that? Okay. What is the area? What is how can we find displacement from this? Well, displacement is just basically the area underneath it, right? Okay. Well. What if it's not just positive? What if it includes negative also? What if we have this? Like let's say this is in the positive direction, this is in the negative direction. What if we have this? So the graph spans over the negative and positive positive regions. Well displacement again, when I say the area on the graph, it doesn't mean all this. No, 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 no. When I say the area on the graph, it is actually the area between the graph and the x-axis. So between the graph, wherever the line is, the graph is, and the x-axis, which is this horizontal line of t. And the area between the graph and the horizontal line between the x-axis is the spacement. Just keep that in mind, okay? And this is t, sorry, not plus, it's t. Okay. So let me just recap. I'm sure that was quite um, quite a lot of information to uh, take in all at once. Let me just recap in yellow. Okay, so the slope of a velocity versus time graph equals acceleration. And instead of writing m, let me just write slope. Okay, and then the area under a velocity versus time graph is displacement and, and remember when I say area I mean the um, area between the x-axis which is this and the graph so the area that's in between here right that's what that, that's what I mean by area okay so we've done velocity we've done displacement and that's basically all you need I mean I guess we could move on to acceleration but no one actually does that it I mean we, we do, but it's not as important because we can't really find a slope. Like, let's say we have an acceleration time graph and it's drawn the same. I mean, once you know one, you know the other, right? Once you know displacement and velocity, we know how to draw an acceleration time graph. And it's really simple. Um, I mean, it's drawn the same. But the thing is, the problem why we don't use a, an acceleration time graph too often is that what is the slope of an acceleration time graph? What is acceleration over change in t like <laughs> that we don't have a term for that like there's no acceleration of acceleration like we don't i don't know so we don't really use um acceleration time graphs that often unless we're trying to find velocity from, from an acceleration time graph and again same thing with velocity right when we have a graph like that to find velocity from an 
from an accelerated time graph, all you're going to do is find the area on a graph, right? And let me just graph it here. I mean, I mean, let me just write out here because I'm sure you guys can see a or some, some sort of relationship going on here. So we have what so far? These three variables, right? A position time graph, a velocity time graph, and an acceleration time graph. Well, what have we seen so far? To get velocity from this, from position, we find the slope, right? And to find acceleration from velocity, we find a slope. And what happened here? To find di um, displacement from velocity, we find the area. And from what we saw over here, we can see that to find velocity from acceleration, we find the area. And voila, this is basically all you need. Um, this is how all the graphs connect to each other. The slope of a, of a posi position time graph is velocity. The slope of an acceleration time graph, I mean, sorry, the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. And the area under an acceleration time graph, like this, is velocity. And the area under a velocity time graph is displacement. Right? And this is how it all connects to each other. And that's basically it for um, for objects with a constant acceleration. So the next lesson we'll move on to objects with ha that have a non-const. I mean, sorry. This lesson we talk about objects with a in in terms of displacement time graphs, displacement time graphs. We talk about objects that had a constant velocity, right? We we dealt with objects with like either a no velocity or a constant velocity, right? Because they're all linear. Next episode, we're going to be talking more about um, objects with a with an acceleration. So we'll see graphs like that, and we'll see graphs like that. So we'll talk more about this in the next episode. So until until then, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace out.